All right, now we're going to step away a little bit from the menus found here inside the panel, and we're going to talk a bit about the grid. Okay. The grid is a very, very important part of any project. It's uh, what you're going to use to gauge the sizes of just about everything you work on. You can snap to it. And uh, you can hide it, show it, adjust it, change all sorts of things about it. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. First off, there are going to be times when you will not want to see your grid. It is going to get in your way, especially in perspective view. I bet you guys that's going to happen 10,000 times for us before this course is over. Especially me, because when I'm working in perspective, after I get started, I hate having the grid there. It just <laughs> drives me up the wall. So there's two different ways to show and hide the grid. There's a way to show and hide it on a local level, which is uh, basically local to each viewport, or on a global level, which will just kill out all grids in all viewports. Which, if you're not careful and you're a beginner, you can get confused with this. Which is why I'm going to explain it That's now. Right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the four view for just a moment. Each of the viewport panels has a show menu. And in this show menu, which uh, I'll be discussing just a little bit more in depth a little bit later, we have the grid option. If you switch that off for any viewport, you are killing off the grid only in that viewport. So you could bring it back. I know this is outside the capture space down here, but it's there. We yeah, promised. but this one isn't. I mean, you can see that. There's grid. Boom. So now it comes back. Also, under the display menu, you have another grid option with a checkbox on it. If you kill this, you've just destroyed all grids. That's right. The grids are gone. You are now free form whatever. <laughs> now, this is where you can get yourself in trouble as a beginner. Let's turn this back on. Uh-oh. Look at this. Oh, yeah, but better. Oh. Go back up to, yeah, turn the grid Here's on. Here's grid. This. Now go to perspective. Mm -hmm. Show and turn the grid off. Mm -hmm. Now go back up and turn display, turn grid off. Now, maximize your view, because, you know, when you first end up in Maya... Sure, sure. I That's cannot I tell you how many beginners have said, Buzz, Buzz, come here. My grid doesn't My work anymore. My grid's gone, and it's grayed out. I can't turn it on. <laughs> yep, and, and uh, this has happened to me several times myself, and I'll very calmly walk over and click display and switch the grid back on, then come over here, switch their grid back on. That'll be two dollars, please. Smack them. <laughs> no, I, I take I take it in pain instead of money. So, uh, but no, there you go. That if you ever come into Maya, and your grid is completely grayed out, just make sure you come up to display. Make sure your grid is actually on That's because right. if it isn't, you won't be able to use it at all. Now, up here under the display menu, you'll notice there's more than just grid and a little checkbox. We also have the options box, and this is where you can change all of the settings for your grid. Ah, now, <laughs> this is where you should take a deep breath and, uh, and chill for a second because you can make some pretty crazy looking grids if you're not careful. Right. The default grid is very straightforward, though. Um, actually, it's almost too straightforward because here's what we have. We have a uh, length and width of 12. What does that mean? That means we go 12 units in each direction, positive and negative, for a total of 24 by 24. Now, we can change that to anything we want. So if I change that maybe up to something like 50, well, we're now going to be going 50 units in each direction. So that'll be 100 by 100. Very huge grid. So let's click Apply, and you see my massive grid now. grid's now much larger. It goes off into the, the distance. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, check this out. We have grid lines every five units. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Now, wait, why is that interesting, somebody asked. I heard him somewhere out there. Why is that interesting, Zach? That was beautiful. Thank you. That's I can go to cute. create. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I can create. Let me just create a locator real quick. And let me move this locator one grid unit in X. So translate X becomes one. We are now sitting, if we frame up on that locator, at the next grid space over. But wait a minute. It says there are grid lines every five units. So if I moved one grid space over, shouldn't I have gone five units? Nothing. Now I'm confused. <laughs> Subdivisions are currently set to five. So how do you differentiate between your grid lines and your subdivisions? This is one of the things that they threw in here that confuses the beginner. What they've done is they've set the grid lines and numbers <laughs> and subdivision lines to the same color. I love that. They are actually separate. They're yes. two separate things. You just can't tell. What I'm going to do real quick is jump down one thing to color, and I'm going to set grid lines and numbers to a darker gray. So look at this. We have black for the axes, dark gray for the grid lines, and light gray for subdivision lines. Let's click Apply, and now suddenly it all becomes clear. In fact, let me get this menu out of the way. We have major grid lines every five units, 
We have su- uh, five subdivision, uh, subdivisions. I can speak five subdivisions per grid space. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually snapping to the subdivisions. It's two subdivisions, three. And when you divide five by five, you get one. Mm-hmm. So that means every subdivision is going to be equal to one unit. So it's just something you got to keep in mind. For example, I could set this to, let's see, let's have grid lines every ten units. But then how many subdivisions do we want to have? Let's just have um, two subdivisions, like so. Let's click Apply. Whoa. So now my grid looks a whole lot more spaced out. If I go from one, like say at the center of the axis, to one major grid line, I have jumped about ten units. If I go back to one of the subdivision lines... I've gone five units, or 4.972, which is close enough for me. So just showing you the difference between grid lines and subdivisions, use these to your advantage. And if you don't know what I mean by that, well, look at it this way. Let's say you're building a boat, and this boat is 30 feet long. You with me? I'm with you. (laughs) I know that boat. I know you're with me. So uh, let's take our length and width for our grid, and let's set it to 15. Why 15 and not 30? Remember, it's going to be 15 in each direction. So uh, that means that the entire length of our grid should be the whole length of our boat. Now, we'll put grid lines every, I don't know, let's say one unit. But then we're going to, for subdivisions, we're going to have 12 subdivisions per grid space. Now, what does that mean? Let's go ahead and apply this. Oh, we get this really, really dense-looking grid. But check this out real quick. We have a total of 30 grid spaces, if you want to count them. I'm not going to. Okay. Inside each grid space, we have 12 subspaces. These could represent inches. They could. So we have uh, 12 inches per every foot. Yes, we're currently in the United States, so we're not yet on the metric system. <laughs> and yes, we know that we've not changed minus default measurements that's, over to that's true. Eight, centimeters to inches. You do not always have to do that. If you're just tra- if you're worried more about proportion than you are about exact scale, sure. you can build just like this, and then later on, if you need to grab the whole thing and scale it up or down, that works great. So we're talking ther- theoretically at a at theoretically. The I'm just uh, what I'm trying to do is get a, a point a across point. That's right. about uh, breaking up your subdivisions. That is all. So let me set this down to two to make something a little more readable, and there you go. Now, down from here, you've already seen color, but you can run these sliders and get some really wild, crazy-looking color schemes for your grid. <laughs> Ow, my eyes. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> look, fear the crazy the color. last time I'm going to look away while you're adjusting color. That's right. Now I'm going to make you stare at him for a minute. No. No, I'm just kidding. Let's go ahead and, uh, if you mess this up and you, you know, don't want to dig back and find whatever you had originally, under edit, you can choose reset settings, which sets all of this back to defaults. Actually, it didn't change the color. So we're going to slide that back to black. We'll slide this back to dark gray, and I'll slide this to light gray. I like the three-tone color scheme. That's just me. So there we go. Now, down from the bottom here, we have display. Now, this allows you to control what you do and don't see as far as components of your grid are concerned. Do you want to see the axes, yes or no? And right now, let's see. Come here. You die. Let's go ahead and switch that off and click Apply. Boom. So now the axes disappear, which looks a little confusing if you think about it. Well, it does to me anyways. No, it is confusing. (laughs) Okay, good. Then it's not just me. I feel better. We have a thicker line for axes. So if you kill that... The axes right in. Yeah, the axes can't be differentiated anymore, so I usually leave that on. You can switch off the major grid lines, which will be the darker lines you see here. Boom, gone. You can switch off subdivision lines if you want to. So now those are gone. You can choose whether or not you see grid numbers. I kind of like these, and I kind of don't like them. If they were some nicer, maybe thinner numbers, I'd be happy. But these are some really bold, kind of obnoxious numbers. So uh, let me go ahead and show these on the axes. Boom. Wow, that's some bold, obnoxious numbers. I think so. <laughs> that's just a personal opinion. Now, they don't change size. So as you zoom in and zoom out, it looks like they're growing and shrinking. That's just an optical illusion. They always stay the same size in your viewport. So there's your viewport numbers currently on the axes. Set them to a long edge, and you get this. And they're just a way for you to tell where you are without having to uh, look count. at numbers in your channel box. Or, yeah, or count. God forbid we should all have to count. Now, uh, we have orthographic grid numbers. Check this out. If I switch these on for the axes, we get this. And this is actually kind of cool. I don't use them, but I'm, I'm fascinated by the simple <laughs> stuff. So look at this. Hang on. That's not what I want to show you. I want to show you on along the edge. Let's look. Okay, here you go. Now look at this. Ooh, Ooh the numbers move with you. <laughs> 
And, yeah, that fascinates me. So, really, that is all of the options for your grid. Use this to whatever you find comfortable. I mean, because I teach a lot, I end up using the default settings Unless more than anything. to game stuff. Oh, yeah. I change it a lot for game stuff. Oh, yeah. You have to. You have to. Because, uh, like, let's say you're doing something for Unreal. One unit in Maya equals one unit in Unreal, which is kind of cool, except until you realize that uh, characters are, like, 96 units tall. Right. Which means you have to, like, if you want to build a vehicle for a character to ride in, I mean, it just goes off into the distance. Right. It's huge. So you have to change all of your grid settings just to line up and, and start coinciding with what it is you're building for. And that's a really good example. So uh, start simply, maybe come in, make a few adjustments just uh, for aesthetics, and then later on, as you start building for different reasons, different types of projects, come in here and make adjustments to, uh, to your grid to make your life easier, because that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks a lot.